Welcome to another Sunday School Short. Today we're in Revelation 4, 5, and 6. Like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you. Hit the bell notification for when new devos come out. This is just the high points. Don't neglect the reading here. Get in here with a good study Bible, a trusted commentary, and we see things in Revelation that are deeply spiritual things, but, and we think we can't understand them, but you can understand them. It is meant to be understood. Revelation 4 moves to the future events of the universal church and all believers, similar to what Daniel and Ezekiel see about future events and such as that. We'll quickly see the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit in uh, these next couple chapters. Chapter 4, John says, Then I looked and saw a door standing open in heaven, and the same voice I had heard before, which is Revelation 1, uh, verse 10 there, spoke to me like a trumpet blast. The voice said, Come up here. Remember, come up here to heaven. Come up here and I'll show you what must happen after this. Instantly in the spirit, uh, I saw a throne and someone sitting on the throne. 24 thrones surrounding him with 24 elders sitting on them. And many theologians believe that was uh, since there were 12 tribes of um, Israel and 12 apostles. This represents the people redeemed by faith before and after the cross. Remember, we, we know that Abraham was a made righteous because of his faith. You know, so people in the Old Testament were also saved by faith. Uh, in front of the throne were seven torches. Verse, the end of five says, this is the sevenfold spirit of God, which we explained in the last Devo that this was the Holy Spirit. So we've already, we've seen, um, someone sitting on the throne and we've seen the holy spirit here also in front of them was a uh, in front was a shiny sea of glass john is showing us heaven before showing us the future events on earth demonstrating hey god's in control he always has been he always will be we'll see this more about uh creating and sustaining here in just a moment verse six the last part in the center and all around the throne were four living beings covered with eyes front and back and this can kind of gets a little weird many people think but if you understand the meaning of the symbology behind it and that's what we're going to do we're going to unpack that a little bit here this is an in-depth in -depth bible study that's why you need a commentary that's why you need a good study bible all right the first one was the symbol of or was a lion it was like a lion which symbolizes majesty and power the second one was an ox which symbolizes faithfulness the third had a human face, which symbolizes intelligence. And the last one was like an eagle in flight, which is sovereignty. Ezekiel saw similar uh, living beings in Ezekiel 1. Day after day, they sang, Holy, holy, holy is Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Verse 8. The 24 elders also bowed and worshipped the one sitting on the throne, laying their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy. O oh God, O oh Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things. And we remember Jesus created all things, okay? So we, we see God, Jesus is God. We see Jesus here. They define him as created all things. He was the one sitting on the throne, but watch this in a second. He's going to be somebody else as well. So we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all in here. Uh, one God and three persons, okay? For you created all things, and they existed because you created what you pleased. Revelation 5, verse 1. Then I saw a scroll in the right hand of the one sitting on the throne, okay? Writing on the inside of the scroll uh, was, the, this scroll was, the scrolls in that time were normally 30 feet long. Uh, they were sealed with seven seals. And we think, well, okay, it was totally rolled up, and there were seven seals. We, me and my wife watched the uh, historical documentaries, and they, they put clay on a seal, and they, they then press their seal into it until it, it dries and hardens, and that's a seal. And we think of it, um, or I did before, uh, oftentimes, where there were just seven on the exterior of that seal, sealing the whole scroll. No, they were wrapped up, um, and as, the, as it was unrolled, another seal would break, and then you'd unroll a little bit more, and unroll a little bit more. We'll talk about that in a second as well. Uh, sealed with seven seals through, throughout, not at the very end again. 
A strong angel said, Who is worthy to break the seals of the scroll and open it? And then one of the 24 elders said, Look, the lion, which is all-powerful, the lion of Judah, the heir to the line of David's throne, has won the victory. All right, And we know Jesus was a, the lion of Judah. He was in the line of David. He has won the victory. He is worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. And then John was told to look up, you know, hey, look at this lion. And as soon as he looked up, he saw a lamb. And a lamb, then then I saw a lamb, which a lamb uh, represents full submission. All right? And so he looked up and saw the lamb, and he appeared to be slaughtered, standing there between the throne and the four living being, beings among the 24 elders. Stay with me here. All right? Stay with me. He had seven eyes and seven horns, which, again, represents the sevenfold spirit or the Holy Spirit. We've already said that. We've established that. He took the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. Just like Jesus was God, um, he still prayed to God the Father. Okay, this is similar. There, this transaction, Jesus said, hey, the Father is in me and I am in him. So even though we see that it's one in the same, okay? So he took it. From the right hand, the one sitting on the throne, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. They said uh, something like this, you are worthy to take the scrolls and open them for you were slaughtered and your blood has ransomed the people of God. Verse nine, then thousands of millions of angels saying, worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. They heard, it, John heard similar things from the living creatures, uh, from the four living beings, which said, Amen. And then the 24 elders bowed down and worshiped the Lamb. Okay, we see these seals. We're coming up on Revelation 6 here. These seals were the first of three different seven part judgments. So there were seven seals. So, But there's also um, a series of judgments in. Uh, trumpets in the form of trumpet blast and then there's another one in judgment seven judgment parts in bowls we'll see that in a minute again this is just high points you get in there with me uh, each seal as it's opened here is bringing into motion the events of the end of human history and that's what we're seeing take place all right revelation 6 here we go the lamb broke the first seal on the scroll all right, John, I looked up and I saw a white horse. Its rider had a bow and a crown on its head. Um, the last part of two, he rode out to win many battles and gain the victory. The horses here are God's judgment. Very similar to in Zechariah. Zechariah in the Old Testament, very similar to the ones he had a vision of horses and judgment in chapter 6 there of Zechariah. The second seal was broken, broken by the lamb. All these were broken by the lamb. Uh, it was a red horse, a war horse, it appeared, and its rider had, a, had been given a mighty sword and the authority to take peace from the earth. See, Jesus is creator, but he's also sustainer. He's holding back all of judgment and wrath, the, the full complement of it, okay? And even in these end times events, he will hold back, all right? He will until the very end. The lamb broke the third seal. A black horse is uh, representing famine. The rider holding a pair of scales. In the last part of six, it says one of the uh, living beings described in uh, Revelation 4 says a loaf of wheat of bread or three loaves, a loaf of wheat bread or three loaves of barley will cost a day's wage and don't waste of olive oil. Can you imagine uh, how deep of a famine we would be in if you had to work an entire day for a loaf of bread, depending on what kind of you, bread you buy. It's anywhere from, you know, grocery store, sliced bread, anywhere from a dollar to about four dollars, depending on how fancy, fancy bread you buy. Can you imagine working all day for a dollar, for four dollars? That's a deep, deep famine, okay? Then the lamb broke the fourth seal, and a pale green horse uh, showed up, and his rider and his companion was the grave. Uh, named Death. All right, don't neglect the reading here. Get in here. Good Bible 
a good Bible, a study Bible, a good commentary, trusted commentary. Don't just randomly look this up on the internet. Get in a trusted commentary. Okay, that's the last part of uh, verse 8. These were given authority. All right, these guys, the pale green horse and his companion. All right, were given authority over one-fourth of the earth to kill with sword, famine, and disease. So a fourth of the world dies. Wow, that's crazy. And still, God's holding back. He wants the other three-quarter of the of the world's population. He's giving them opportunity to return to him. So we think, oh, this is terrible. No, God is still giving people a chance to the very, very end. The fifth seal is broken. John says in verse 9, the altar, and the altar here symbolizes the temple. Uh, in the temple, um, animals were slaughtered in the Old Testament times, and they were sacrificed there. And you did that as a uh, testament of your faith. You, you were told to bring so, such and such for this, and you brought it in faith that that was going to cleanse you for a time. All right, the altar of the souls of all who had been martyred for the word of God and for being faithful in their testimony. And it goes on to say that these martyred, they wanted Jesus to go ahead and judge the earth, and he responds to him, hey, and he responds to them, hey, rest a while longer until the full number of Jesus' servants had joined them. The lamb breaks the sixth seal. Remember, there's seven. We won't hear about the seventh until chapter eight. But uh, there's a great earthquake with this sixth seal. And we're, now we're back to the physical world a little bit, okay? So the sun turns dark. The moon turns red as blood. The stars fell from the sky. The sky is rolled up like a scroll. All the mountains and islands are moved from their place. Then everyone, kings, rulers, generals, the wealthy, slaves, all of the free, hid in caves asking rocks to fall on them. And this is how bad it was getting, okay? Or this is how bad it's going to get. In the tribulation time, the great tribulation time. Verse, the last part of 16, they wanted rocks to fall on them. Hide us from the face of the one who sits on the throne and the wrath of the Lamb. Um, all those remaining on earth will experience fear. And whether you're destined for the things of heaven, even if you've, you've turned your life over to Christ during this great tribulation time, you're going to experience fear. Yet true believers will receive rewards rather than punishment. They'll still have the fear of all this, but that fear will be overcome by them knowing what's going to take place. God bless you. Get in there with me. I can only hit the high points. Like, subscribe, and share.